guys, welcome back to my channel, and if you're new, hey what's up, my name is Tanya, and thank you all so much for joining in and watching this video. This video's shout out goes to Michelle L. Michelle, thank you so much for that sweet comment today. It meant so much to me that you love watching my videos, that you think I'm so genuine and down to earth and fun. and. I, that's what my channel is all about. That's what I try to like make my videos about and embody and just be fun and about makeup and beauty and skincare and just all of us hanging out and having a great time. So I'm so happy that you picked up on that vibe and that you feel the same way too because that is really my goal at the end of the day and it's to put smiles on your faces and hopefully take the edge off of a stressful day, stressful week, month, year whatever is going on in your life at that moment. So I always hope that this is a place that everybody can come to to just unwind, relax, de-stress, and have some fun and unplug from the stressors of daily life. So thank you very much for that comment. It really meant a lot to me. This video is about the new Magic Palette by Juvia's Place. <laughs> I was so excited when this arrived yesterday and I was so bummed that I was so under the weather that I could not get into it and film a tutorial and that it was so late at night because I was dying to and I refuse to like sneak peek anything when it comes. I wait until I can sit down and film so it killed me for the last 24 hours because I was still in really rough shape this morning. But I took some meds and I was able to film and oh my god, this is amazing. <laughs> Lulu, this is amazing. <sighs> I mean, you guys are about to see all of this up close and up close and everything swatched out. But oh, guys, it is just the metallic foil shades are out of this world, creamy, blinding, beautiful. I just, ugh, so good. This is probably my favorite palette by Juvia's Place yet. Killed it, just killed it. I love, I, there are so many looks that I want to create. There are so many shades I am obsessed with. I had the hardest time trying to figure it out. Like you have no idea. The only way I was actually able to narrow it down was because I've done green lately. Otherwise, I so wanted to work with Buzo because this emerald green is like a whole other level of gorgeousness. Then I actually like was obsessed with these three shades for a smoky look, but I just did a smoky look with the New Jouer Skinny Dip palette and I was like, damn it, I just did smoky, I just did green. This purple has such a dual chrome with like a, a blue shift in it and it is amazing. That could be incredible all over the lid. Then I was like wanting to do like this gold all over the lid. This gold is incredible. Wait till you see the swatch. The baby pinks I wanted all over the lid. Like the blue. Oh my gosh. I literally narrowed it down because the coral, once I swatched that coral, that which is like the, the main on the crease that you see, I was like, hey, I need to work a look around the coral shade because I just don't have anything really like that coral shade in my collection, which is crazy, but I don't. So once I made the decision that like I had to work with the coral, I just color schemed around the coral and I really took a risk because I had no idea if popping in this golden like uh, gold rose on the inner corner would be like a bad decision or not, but you guys know I'm all about taking risks. So that's what I did. I used the Nubian palette for one transition shade. I did my best to just stick to the Nubian 
or the, sorry, the Juvia's Place palettes only today. So I used one transition shade from the Nubian palette, which you wouldn't really need, but this palette, I didn't feel comfortable jumping from white right to this one. So I did the white, then I did the one shade from the Nubian palette, then I jumped to this shade, and then I went into uh, the coral, and I, I love this coral shade. And then this is what's on the inner corner of my eye, and then this is what's all over the lid. I did use one of my Tarte glitter liners to put glitter in the crease, but I even stuck to uh, Juvia's Place, the Saharan Blush Volume 2 palette, and I used both of these two blushes. I mixed them for my blush, and I highlighted with this shade for the gold highlight. So if you guys are Juvia's Place collectors, you can actually pretty much recreate this eye look and what I have going on for the cheek look with all your Juvia's Place palettes. So if you guys want to see how to get this eye look, see the swatches, see everything in action, then just keep on watching. So as you guys know, this pretty baby arrived yesterday and I am dying to get into it. So let's just get into this. Well, I guess I should read it first. It says, Opposites Attract. The magic palette was inspired by the moon and sun goddesses of the wilds. A beautiful fusion of cool and warm tones. Vibrantly infused with 16 ultra-pressed pigments. Perfect for day-to-nighttime looks. And remember, Juvia's Place is also a cruelty-free uh, makeup brand. I still wanted to work with this yesterday, but I've been having a really rough few days. I think it's all the weather changes, pressure system, uh, allergies are out of control. I'm on pain meds again right now, so I might have even more blonde moments than normal. Just an FYI. So, they did a good job packaging this, actually. I appreciate that. Okay, here we go. I don't know why. Can you see? No, there we go. See, I have to, like, I think I'm going to have to hold everything back here. Oh, she's pretty. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. I don't know what I'm going to freaking do. Okay, let me try back here first. And then I'm going to zoom it all the way in. Look at these. Oh my god, that pink looks so pretty. The gold, the blues. Oh! Holy cow, you guys. That green is outstanding. This is gorgeous. This is definitely their best palette yet. Oh, I so don't know what to do. <sighs> Alright, I'm going to get to swatching. My mind is having a seizure right now. These are just so, so insanely gorgeous. Let me go really close and then I'll just move it up. So you guys can really take in all of these shades. You see my dilemma? <laughs> oh my gosh. I don't know whether to go like with the pinks and the purples or whether to go with the blues. But on my viewfinder, this is not showing up as gorgeous of a green as that really is. Oh my gosh. All right. I'm going to get to swatching, and then I will be right back. <gasps> so I swatched row by row by row by row, and the metallic foiled shades are so crazy pigmented and creamy. I can't even begin to tell you guys, but the mattes are a little bit dry, some a little bit more dry than others, like... 
Uh, this one was the most dry for me and this one as well. But this was the most dry and patchy to swatch as I go out of frame. <laughs> but the other mattes weren't too bad and just, oh my goodness, on the metallics. They are just so buttery creamy. It is insane. Now, I'm just going to tell you row by row on the swatches because looking at these names, there is no way I have a hope in pronouncing any of them. So, that's what I'm going to do. Alright, look at these swatches. I am dying. Like, just, ugh. They are, they are amazing. And there are looks for days in this palette. So the first row are these four. So there's a really nice light transition shade to start off. But look how gorgeous that gold is. This orange. This is such a ballerina pink. It is so beautiful. And then the transition shade. Then the next row are these four, and I am obsessed with these four. I mean, I'm, I'm obsessed with all of it. I think this is the best palette yet. This is like a rose gold, and I am living for rose golds. You guys know I love rose golds. Another great transition shade. Beautiful lid all over the lid shade. This shade is actually really speaking to me. It is such a vibrant, pigmented coral color, and I don't think I've really worked with much uh, coral, many coral shades on my channel. So I may actually go with something coral today for the first look anyway, and I mean, I have to create a couple of looks with this palette. It is just unbelievable. And that finishes the second row. This, oh my goodness, the duochrome in this purple shade with like the littlest bit of like blue shifts in it are, it's just, it's unbelievable. So these four shades are the third row and this makes me want to do a smoky eye look, these three shades. But this needs to be like an all over shade lid because that duochrome, oh my goodness. And then the last row, these two mattes really were patchy and dry to swatch out. But they're nice, they are very beautiful colors. Like this deep purple and this deep blue are gorgeous. But these two metallics, oh. This is the green that I I just, I, I love. If I hadn't just done a green tutorial, I would probably be using the green. And this one is really unique because it's like a green blue. It is like a mermaid vibe. When you think mermaid vibes, this is what mermaid dreams are made of. So I, I just, I still don't know what I'm going to do for a look. I really don't because these colors are just so breathtaking. But I'm going to go prep and prime my eyes, and then I will be back. Alright, so I'm going to keep this completely Juvia's themed. So even though there aren't enough transition shades for what I would like to do, I'm also going to incorporate the Nubian one shade from here for a transition shade, and then possibly one shade from the Saharan Blush Volume 2 palette for a transition shade and I'm going to try to use a blush from here too so it'll just depend on how the, how the eye look comes across but that's my game plan so if you guys are Juvia's Place collectors you'll be able to completely recreate this look using the palettes and if not they're just transition shades you can really find them anywhere so starting with Kezi? <laughs> See, that one's not too bad. I'm going to just build the crease and above. We are going to go for it and do a cut crease today and play. And I'm going to go for it with the coral because it is just calling my name. And you guys know when a color speaks to me, 
I just can't help it. And that one's speaking to me and that one green is, but I'm going to pass on the green and mix it up a little. So here we go. Carity E31 because it's just, I just, I live for this blending brush. I can't help it. I know you guys must be so sick of me always using this brush, but I told you ever since I discovered it, I then ordered two backups because I just, I'm not in love with this brush. I don't know what it is. It's just, it's so, it's literally perfection. They are so inexpensive. They're a cruelty-free brand. It's just so good. Now taking the Nubian palette, I'm going to take this shade for my next transition shade because the one in the Magic palette you could use, but it's a little bit dark for the next transition shade because the first one was essentially bone color. So I'm going to use that before I get into any other ones. And same motions. Now I'm going to take Nana, the shade. It's upside down, but I'm not reading it wrong. <laughs> it's that one. And that was the shade I was talking about that I didn't want to jump into without having a, a lighter one first. So again, same motions before I'm going to scale my brush down. Same brush too. And I'm going to start this with a very light hand. Now I'm going to take Koji, which is that very vibrant coral color, and a Morphe M441 to scale the brush down, which is just a fluffy tapered brush, and put this in the crease and slightly above. Oh my god, I love this color. Love. All right, since I just did a crazy cut crease with like, you know, winging it out with the cut crease, I'm just going to do a lid cut crease today. So same steps, but I mean, well, same initial steps minus trying to do that precise. So that way it's a little bit easier to recreate as well. So taking my MAC Pro Longwear Concealer, put a pump on the back of my hands, and my Sigma Cut Crease E62 brush. 
coat both sides. Now I'm going to start working from the base up. Now I'm just going to take a clean Morphe E23 and go back in with the bone color that we used as the first transition shade to set this down before it starts transferring. And then I'm going to take a little Morphe M507 brush just to get up in the crease. Now taking Zuba on a MAC 242 brush. This is such a big palette. <laughs> I'm gonna coat this baby well. I, oh, oh my gosh. Okay, I just went into the wrong pink. I was just looking at pink because I'm so drawn into pink. There we go. It's wiped off. Going back to Zuba. <laughs> I told you guys I'm going to have some extra blonde moments today. And pick that up. Milani, her up. I promise, Nikki, I'm working on the idea for t-shirts. It's just been, I've been really under the weather the last couple of days, but I'm going to figure out some really cool things. And I'm just going to put a little bit of this on the inner corner. That is such a gorgeous rose gold. <sighs> now taking a Boro new, <laughs> I don't know, but that gorgeous shade, I'm gonna use my MAC 242, coat that baby well. I also have a backup of this brush because it's one of my favorites and I can't live without it. <laughs> In case you were wondering. And this will be the rest of the shade lid. Sh oh my god, the lid color. Now taking my Tarte Tardis Pro Glitter Liner in Rose Gold, we're going to pop some of this in the crease. So starting with the base, you guys, these are all on sale for $12. I don't know if, Laura, you caught that or not. I meant to text you and tell you, but they're on sale. So hurry up and get them while you can.
Now taking the beautiful glitter side. I hope that this sale doesn't mean that this is it. Because these are normally 24 and being on sale for 12. I'm going to be really sad because these are gorgeous. And NYX doesn't even have a rose gold. So I can't even go to NYX or Urban Decay for a rose gold. And you guys, you don't need to do this step if you don't have glitter. I just love glitter. I know it's extra, but this was, I mean, these eyeshadows are beautiful on their own anyway. I just, I'm extra and I love glitter. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna go line, do my face, lashes, and then I will be back to do the lower lash line. So I finished up my face and we have a few products to go to go over, but I want to get some swatches out of the way first because Laura asked me a question the other day about the J-Cat Beauty highlighters in comparison to BH Cosmetics pink highlighters. So I did some swatches and I want to show you what they look like. So Laura, I was not sure which pink you were talking about between on point and illusion so I swatched both and then I realized that illusion is way more of a lilac icy color but I did swatch both of them for you so for comparison purposes I think I have to do it back here again how did I do that angled you know what I think I'm going to have to actually get up and zoom my camera in because it just has a hard time with lights. Oh, there you go. Okay. So if this is not helpful and you can't see it because on my viewfinder, I can see them. But if you can't make it out in the video, I'll re-swatch them in, a, in the next video. So just let me know. So this one is, oh, hold on, what was it called again? Okay, this one is BH Cosmetics On Point, and that's BH Cosmetics Illusion. So you can see all four are very different pinks. So those are the two BH, and I know that the BH are amazing because I've worked with all six of the shades now in that palette, in the, the black light. No, that did not just happen. <laughs> We're all good. <sighs> High quality drugstore. I love peach cosmetics. All right, so I know that the formulation in this palette is incredible. Now, I wasn't sure which J Cat Beauty Pink you were talking about because I have Bella Rose and I have Pink Goddess. So I was assuming Pink Goddess, but I swatched them both for you. So. Uh, Bella Rose is the really icy one and then Pink Goddess is actually like on the bronzy side of things. So all four shades are crazy different and I haven't actually used the J-Cat Beauty yet for a highlight so I can't compare the formulation but you can see that they are blinding AF swatches. I can only just tell you how incredible the BH Cosmetic formula is in this palette and then you obviously get six shades but if you're not going to ever use like a blue or the green, the green is very subtle though. Like I, you guys saw that I used a green and Laura, you watch all my tutorials. So I'm sure you remember when I used the green and it was so subdued, but 
that's what they look like and there's just they're all so different so i hope this was helpful but if not let me know and i will redo it or maybe they're let me see if i can keep coming in no it eventually just kind of fades out into nothing So there are the swatches though, but I will be very happy to redo it or take a picture or whatever you need. So you just let me know and I will be happy to do so. Now, uh, like I'll cover the basics first. So I wanted to test out my Marc Jacobs The Face uh, number three buffer brush for foundation. So I tried another foundation, well not another, I tried out my Fiona Styles Luminous Finish Foundation Concentrate in the shade number four today. And oh my goodness, because I, I keep trying out more foundations using that brush and I barely needed any foundation and I got the fullest coverage out of this. It that brush is incredible. I know it's so expensive up front, but I'm telling you guys, if you like full coverage and you want like to use, make your foundations last just so you're not having to repurchase them as often so you save money that way, the, every foundation that I keep retrying out with that brush, it's incredible. So that's the foundation that's on my face right now. And I promise you guys, I'm going to get to the Battle Series uh, very soon for the sponges where I just stick to Wet n Wild. I was just so curious to see that Marc Jacobs brush in action with a few different foundations so I could really give you guys an in-depth review. And that brush, I mean, it is scratchy. It's not soft bristles, but it just gets the job done incredibly incredibly well. So then I use my Tom Ford eye defining pen. Today I actually had to use a new one. So the other one though lasted me like so many months, like legit five or six months. So when you break it down that way, it's like 10 bucks a month really. And it's incredible and you get the double ended tip and it's just, it is so, so good. So uh, that's going to be my ride or die forever, I think. <laughs> then I use my Ardency and Monster Pencil in Black to tight line and do my waterline. I have two different lip combos on. For a base, I put ColourPop Ultra Glossy Lip in Tokyo Tea. As my base and then for extra sparkle I put my Anastasia lip gloss in sunset strip on but it has worn down quite a bit I'm gonna have to redo it because I did a mini video for you guys which will be up hopefully in a day or two after this video on the physicians formula butter bronzer because I know so many of you have been asking about it so that's what I bronzed with today so I did a full demonstration of this for you and then I used the Saharan blush volume 2 palette it does not want to pick up on the white writing there we go and I actually mixed both of these blushes for my blush and then I highlighted using this pink which turned into gold. I was not expecting that at all because when I did the swatches it swatched as like a light rose gold. I mean look at that. And so now I'm really curious as to how that one is going to apply because that one did not swatch at all gold like this so I don't know but I used both of those and then that highlight I told you I was really gonna try to stick to just Juvia's Place for any Juvia's Place collectors so that's what I did now I put two products to the test for you guys because I wanted to know whether or not they're actually good because so many big youtubers just brave about them but so many big youtubers are like bought and paid for 
So I'm always on the fence about things like that anyway and that's why I like to go for like more indie brands and I just like to go for my own groove of what looks good to me like my elegance lashes for instance when I discovered that company I've just been so ride or die for elegance lashes because they're more of an indie makeup company they're so small still and I just I truly believe in that company where Lily lashes are all over the place and I feel like so many people are endorsed by them, sponsored by them, affiliated with them, so they're making money by promoting Lily Lashes. So I bought a pair to test out for myself to let you guys know whether or not they're any good, and they're amazing. So that's what I'm wearing right now. These are the Lily Lashes band lists, and they're like literally there's next to no band. It is such a clear, floppy, flimsy band that a, a beginner could use these ones if you wanted to make the investment because these are like a pricier. They're like the $25, $30 range. But these are the type that get you the 20 to 25 uses. And these are in the style Faux Mink Sophia because I'll never buy mink lashes. And so these are like so full and wispy, but they are so comfortable. I honestly cannot feel that I'm wearing them. And look how dramatic these are. So this is not hyped up for no reason. They really are great. I'm not going to like just start all of a sudden wearing nothing but Lily Lashes on my channel. I just really wanted to buy them for you guys and let you know from my opinion whether or not these are hyped up for no reason, but they're actually really good. However, the next product is definitely bought and paid for by everybody affiliated with Morphe because this sucks the prep and set makeup setting spray. Everybody's been claiming like I adore like Manny MUA so much and like uh, Jaclyn Hill so much. There's been so much drama with Morphe lately. So much. And they have essentially claimed that this is like their new favorite setting spray and it is such a dupe for like MAC Fix Plus and you can use it as your your prep, your primer and you set it and it does have a beautiful mister. I'm not going to take away from that. Like it has a great mist but when you have, and it has a perfume scent, okay, and Manny has complained about Milani having a perfume scent to it, which I think is a beautiful scent, but you know, that's fine. Not everybody likes it, but Manny in one of his videos was like, the Milani make it last, but it has like this weird, it has a perfume smell it in it, which I think is weird. Like he made that kind of a quote. I don't, I'm not saying it was word for word, but it was literally something along those lines. This has a perfume scent in it. And now all of a sudden he's pushing this product and pushing it and pushing it and pushing it because he gets 10% commission. So for instance, on um, every uh, like $10 item that sells, he gets a dollar and then we get to save a dollar and then Morphe gets $8. It's like that type of a situation. So that's why so many YouTubers push Morphe so, so much who have affiliate codes because they're making big bucks. And a lot of them, like a lot of them, like are making $50,000 a month just off of Morphe. I've done a lot of research, okay? So this is why I'm starting to have issues with Morphe because I've noticed a big decline in quality lately. I'm buying Jaclyn Hill's palette. I've loved Jaclyn for so long. Uh, 
when I had made that comment about it, her being a little bit weird in a few videos, it was a few videos back, not the last couple videos, but it was a few videos ago where she just seemed like she was hopped up on something. She was not herself. She was like just out there. It wasn't the Jacqueline that I fell in love with last year. And now she seems to be back to normal again. And I think that Jacqueline really is a, a genuine person and uh, might just be more naive and oblivious than anything. But I'm starting to lose respect for uh, Manny and Laura Lee a lot because they did this uh, big shopping trip to the Morphe store and they pretended and led all of us to believe that they were going on this huge shopping splurge and that they were just buying out the store and they were showing us their carts being filled and filled and filled and filled and then took photos of it and when with the huge receipt when you zoom in on the receipt every single item is marked as zero dollars they didn't have to pay for a single thing from morphe and that is just so misleading so i have lost trust in those two as far as their opinions go i still I get a kick out of their videos, they're entertaining to watch, but I have completely lost all trust in what they recommend because like just Manny making the comment about how Milani's Make It Last spray has a perfume scent being weird and now that I have this in my hand and it has a very similar scent but all of a sudden he loves this and there's nothing better than this in the world. I literally had to go back over my face and go over it with Fix Plus to have all the powders come together because this did nothing. I doused my face and then fanned it off and I looked at it and I'm like, okay, it dried off, but you can see all the powder. Nothing melted together. So I went and I did another coat. And the same thing. It was as if I wasn't spraying a setting spray on my face. So then I took my Fix Plus, did one coat, dried it off, and everything meshed together. All the powders, everything just became one. So please, you guys, do not be bought into this. I'm gonna do another video getting into more details because there is a lot going on with this brand right now and I'm get, like I said I'm gonna buy Jacqueline's palette I've been wanting it for so long because I've loved her for so long and I want to review it for you guys um, but I'm just I'm really disappointed because I, I was I was somebody that I feel I was duped by Morphe and I just don't want to promote them on my channel. So, and I wanted to, like I said, I, I was expecting Lily Lashes to not be like the bomb and be just also a bought and paid for. And they really truly, my camera shut off because my memory card ran out of memory. I've ordered a bigger one, but that keeps happening because the Canon files are so much bigger. Uh, but what I was saying was I was really truly expecting Lily Lashes to kind of be crap and just bought and paid for as well. But these really truly are amazing. So like I told you guys, I'm always going to be real and just be blunt and right to the truth. And I don't care if it hurts my career or slows down my career on YouTube because you guys matter more to me than any kind of affiliate could ever matter, any company, any anything. So I'm, I really want to do it for you guys and 
be truthful with you. So Lily Lashes, the hype is real. They're incredible. I don't feel them. I think I could wear these for like eight hours and not have that need to want to pull them off at the end of the day. This is junk. It, you, you may as well be spraying Evi, scented Evian water on your face. Honestly, I'm, uh, I'm so mad that I bought this, but I'm very happy that I did so that way I could give you guys a review on it and hopefully save you some money in case you were going to buy it when Jacqueline's palette drops because just don't. <laughs> Unless you want scented Evian spray, then buy it or if you really want to try it for yourselves. Um, I'm just really disappointed in it. I don't know. It should, I'm disappointed in the YouTubers. I will leave a link. Uh, there's this YouTuber, John Cookian. Cookian. He's British, so I'm not really sure how to pronounce his last name, but he is really incredible for doing a lot of investigative work and really getting down to the nitty gritty details. And I'm going to leave a link to his channel because I have found out a lot of information that I otherwise would not have known about. So if you guys want to check out his channel, you'll see even more details of what I'm speaking about. And of course, you're, I mean, make your own decisions up. I'm just, I'm, I'm letting you know my feelings and my thoughts and where I stand on uh, Morphe in general and everything in general, really. So anyway, now we are going to get back to makeup and finishing up this lower lash line. See, I bought some Morphe brushes almost a year ago and these ones are still going strong. And then when I bought replacements and tried the replacements, I did forget to mention this to you guys, they have now had so much fallout that I can't even like the bristle fallout I can't even use them so I'm still using my brushes from a year ago so I don't know if they've even changed their brush quality I just I don't know what's going on with the company and I know that I use a lot of Morphe brushes but I forgot I wanted to tell you guys that too that when I did place another order to get backups there was a big difference like I just took them out I felt them and there was like so much fallout just from like feeling the brushes. I was like, what? So they were shedding like crazy where the ones from a year ago are still going really strong. So something's going on. I don't know what is going on, but something is going on. So I just, I want you guys to know that. <laughs> okay. Now on to the good stuff because I just hate bringing the bad stuff. So taking the first transition shade that we used earlier, Kessie, this one, the white, the bone colored one, I'm going to take my Morphe M507 and smoke that into the lower lash line, below the lower lash line. Now going into the Nubian, I'm going to take this shade, same brush, and smoke that into the lower lash line. Taking Nana on the same Morphe brush, I'm going to smoke that into the lower lash line. Now taking Koji, the coral color, and a Sephora Pro Smudge brush, number 11. I'm going to smudge that beneath the lower lash line. Now taking Zuba, 
was it? Yeah, Zuba on a Morphe M432 brush. I'm gonna coat this baby well, and I dipped it into the right pink this time. Milani, her up. That in the inner corner. Now taking Boronu, Boronu, whatever that color is, Boronu. Oh my god, I'm so itchy, my allergies. And now my face is sticky from that stupid setting spray too, by the way. That Morphe spray is so tacky and sticky. <sighs> I use the same Morphe M432 brush. Milani her up. Now going back into the Saharan Blush Volume 2 palette. Taking Zoba and my Morphe M506 and highlight the inner corners. All right, this makeup look is complete. I'm just gonna go get dressed and I will be right back. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. I really hope that you love this eye look that I came up with because I really love it. I think it is so summertime and that makes me so happy giving me summer vibes because oh my gosh, we are so overdue for summer in Michigan, like whoa. So I just, I'm loving it because it just, it. it Everything about it to me just speaks spring, summer, and I love this. And I, like I said, I was so worried taking some of those risks, but it paid off. It, to me anyway, it did. And I really love the way it came out, turned together, all meshed and blended, and like this palette is just incredible. So this is gonna be a look that I think I will go to quite often this summer. It's just, it's so summertime. It's just summertime appropriate. So if you guys like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Please share it. Please subscribe if you haven't already. And until next time, good night, good morning, wherever you are. I love you guys so much, and I will talk to you later. Bye, guys.